Hello, everybody. We're back. And we, we have our third with us again. Regular thing, right? Kelly, you going to hang out with us or what? Hopefully, yeah. I'd like to keep my spot. <laughs> Heck yeah, on the Eiffel Tower. You look good yeah. there, Kel. Yeah. Thanks. We don't know what the background is. We think we it don't. might be the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, but whatever. There's a Latin inscription, if anybody knows. I was that. just going to say, there's. We thought if we read it, we might accidentally summon like Gozer or something, like some sort Ooh. of shit will happen. So we decided. Yeah, I yeah. would advise against yeah. summoning. <laughs> I don't think anyway, that now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back for another another Friday of like fun and fun and frivolity with recovery concepts and all kinds of good stuff. With me as always is Lauren. Lauren Wave, just so everybody knows that that's Hello, Lauren. that's Lauren me. Rose, mm -hmm. Hey Frankie, below me. Hey hey Kelly, how are you doing? Hi. Yep. Um, both working therapists in the sunny state of California, specializing in OCD and anxiety disorders. Right. And it's raining. It's raining here. It's it raining. is raining. All right. Is it raining in New York One, as well, year. or is it snowing? We had snow last night. It's raining today, though. Mm. Mm. Slush. So now you have slush. Bit, Delightful. Yeah. Yep. And if anyone's joining from either Kelly or my pages, this right here is Drew Linsalata. He's awesome, and he is actually in the midst of studying to become a, a licensed therapist in the state of New York City. Our, no, what? <sighs> that would get you lynched here. Yeah, the big of New York City. You would run out of the state and the city for that. Dude, are you fucking this up, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't she's pulling it up on us. Dude. <laughs> Nothing. Don't tell. I messed it up. <laughs> oh, no. The bag man. Sorry. <laughs> it's my cold. I lived in New York City for a year. I just, you know, yeah. anyway, the point, um, Walter, is that Drew. <laughs> <laughs> is going to be a therapist in New York and he's wonderful and he's already written lots of books and he does lots of wonderful stuff on Instagram and on YouTube. So you should check him out if you Absolutely. aren't already right. familiar with him. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to leave and Kelly to do her, our Lebowski. <laughs> that, might, that might be all that I got today, but Royal, we'll see. We'll Royal see. we. And the Royal we. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, today we thought we would talk about, last time the three of us got together in the conversation, the abstinence violation effect. Is that what it is? Come up. That is. That's what it is. And, you know, us being nerdy about this sort of stuff, I had to key into that because it seemed so interesting. So, Lauren, you're the one that sort of threw it in there. What is that? And how are we going to relate that today? Yeah. So it's generally brought up in the context of uh, recovery from substance use disorder and Oftentimes the goal of recovery from substance abuse disorder, though not always, but sometimes, oftentimes abstinence is, is the goal, um, which in many ways it's not different from what, what we're talking about here with OCD and anxiety disorders. The goal is in many respects to abstain from safety behaviors and or compulsions, depending on which disorder we're talking about. And so when uh, the idea in the substance use disorder realm is that when somebody violates their abstinence, i.e. uses drugs, drinks, when they're intending to abstain ongoing, there's oftentimes something called the abstinence violation effect that occurs. I have encyclopedia.com right here to, to enlighten us, which mm -hmm. says the abstinence violation effect occurs when an individual having made a personal personal commitment to abstain from using a substance or to cease engaging in some other unwanted behavior has an initial lapse whereby the substance or behavior is engaged in at least once. Some individuals may then proceed to uncontrolled use. The abstinence violation effect occurs when the person attributes the cause of the initial lapse, the first violation of abstinence, to internal, stable, and global factors within, like lack of willpower or the underlying addiction or disease. Um, and so the idea here is we wanted to talk about what happens when, when somebody does a compulsion or does a safety behavior after, after a period of, of resisting and then goes, well, screw it. I've already messed it up. I might as well keep going. Yeah. And, and chaos ensues. Yeah. And I, that's a pretty common theme. That is the, before, excuse me, before we hit the record button, we were talking about I haven't had a panic attack in three weeks and I had one. So uh, that's it. All bets are off. Yeah. Or I haven't Googled my symptoms or I haven't 
asked my wife for reassurance in, in two weeks and I did it last night and, and that's it. I'm in a spiral now. I'm in a setback. Might totally. as well just keep going. Yeah. 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 Might as well just keep going. Keep digging. Let it out. ride. Yeah. But I think that's what people, and you know, it's so funny when you said that I can relate to like, you know, yeah, I've been really doing great and, and dropping weight, but oh, I blew my, I blew it this morning. I was going to say, bagel, so I'll just eat two pizzas for the rest of the day. Cause I might as well. Right. The right. working out, actually, the eating very, I was going to say, that's definitely like really common to see too. Yeah. yeah to Super that. common. And yet it's, it sort of points to the problem, I think with abstinence in those areas in particular, um, mm -hmm. because it's not, uh, just saying like, I'm never going to eat this, or I'm always going to do this. It's, it's not always realistic now, you know, but with, with substance use disorder, yeah, abstinence can, can be a thing, but when we're looking at things like behaviors like Google searching, right? Like that's mm -hmm. something that you're going to do in your life anyway. And so you're going to sometimes lapse into doing it for the wrong reasons and, and not realize that you've done it until after the fact. Makes sense. So when you guys see this, like in the OCD world, is it, am I throwing in the towel? Well, I did it. I, I, <laughs> I gave into my compulsions this morning. So I'm just going to keep doing them. Is that what you, is that a, is that a common occurrence? That, and um, I'd say also not doing exposure work. So you might send your client home with an exposure log and they have a list of things that they have to do or that they've been assigned to do. And then they don't do one and they're like, ugh. they come back the next week. They're like, I didn't even do any of them because that first one I just didn't do. So I figured, right, Lauren, does that happen to you? Oh, absolutely. No, that's so spot on. Right. Or and even like, I won't go to therapy because I didn't do it. Yes. Oh, Wait, that comes up all no. the time. <laughs> yeah. Like you need, that's, we'll do it together then in session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've kind of heard similar things like that. I didn't want to say this in the group, for instance, like in my Facebook group, no. you know, they're like reluctantly, no. I didn't want to say it cause I am going to disappoint, you know, like I, I ruined it. I, I did it wrong. Yeah. I'm you guys. Like, oh, hang on. So I, people would actually skip the next session because I'll, I just yeah, won't go. Yeah. Won't work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shame it part, of, too, part of it. Right. That's what I was just thinking. Very much so. And I, I think part of, part of it is this cultural narrative that we have that somehow whipping ourselves for making choices that we somehow dislike or would not repeat is, is an effective way of changing things, which I have yet to find that to be true, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately or yeah. unfortunately. Um, but usually we don't, yeah we, yeah, we don't learn that way. Unrealistic expectations. And you said like, you know, abstinence. So I'm never going to do a compulsion ever again, or else my recovery isn't recovery. That can't be. Actually, it's the opposite, right? Like you can't recover without including compulsions. I would say. You have, like, if you don't stumble. Yeah. Then how are you going to, first of all, learn how to come back from that? You're not going to recover very well because it's going to happen regardless. Yeah. So you have to learn where the traps are. You have to be willing to fall constantly. So then you can have a, this roadmap of navigating the real world, like actually using Google because you're going to have to use Google. Yeah. And then on top of it, what we see a lot of is that then people, and we've talked about this, I think even on here is that, um, it becomes the fixation becomes I need to make sure I never do a compulsion or a safety behavior, because if I do, then something bad will happen. And then people start to go back and forth about whether or not something ill, is this a compulsion? Oh, I don't want to do it. If it's a compulsion, maybe it is. And then the ruminating and it's a mess. So really that becomes the fixation and the point of um, eliciting more anxiety and less time doing the things that matter to you. Yeah. Right. Like everything hinges on this one choice or right. this one behavior. But the reality is, is like, okay, you did compulsions. Let's do it differently tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, that kind of speaks to the, that desire to try and completely control the experience all the time. I need to yeah. be hundred percent sure that I'm doing it right, that I'm progressing, I'm getting better. Yep. And if it doesn't feel that way, then I start to get lost in the, the rat's maze of thinking and analyzing. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, to me, I always try and tell people like, go ahead and recover imperfectly because like you said, Kelly, that teaches you the most lessons, like have all the experiences. You need them mm -hmm. all. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Make mistakes. It's okay. Yeah. You have to. Um, or when people come in and they're like, ah, uh, I did all these things. I didn't do all these things. And like, they did a really gnarly exposure and they're like, but I did, but I did this small compulsion, like, or this compulsion. And I'm like, okay, but you did like all these other intensely anxiety provoking things. So you did a compulsion. Okay. Now this week we'll do it differently. We'll do it like this. Right. So it's not all or nothing. It's not all quote unquote fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the really interesting things in this definition too, which I, I like, it was kind of a surprise because I hadn't read that far. Um, but the idea of that when we attribute the, the lapse to something that's internal to us, that's stable, mm -hmm. that's unchangeable, right? Um, like I just don't have the willpower to do this or Ooh, it's yeah. impossible or I can't, right. We see, uh, see this come up all the time that when, when the choice, right. Like, so we, it's almost like a choose your own adventure book, right? So you, you do a, a compulsion or a safety behavior, and then you can either go down path a, which is to that story, right? Like, oh, I just can't, like, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. What's wrong with me? I'll never get better. Or you can go to the, this isn't a stable condition, right? Like we can then start to go, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I did this thing, but I'm not, and I'm not thrilled about it. I prefer not to do it again, but it's not about me. It's not because I did something wrong or because I'm mm -hmm. like a, I, I did something that I'd prefer not to repeat, but I'm not a bad human or incapable because of it. So like, I, I don't know, I see a really important fork in the road there as to, in terms of how we're, what, what we're attributing it to, like either, of course, you're going to compulse because it's normal or you compulsed because you suck at this and you're going to be trapped forever. Yeah. I maybe made a mistake, but it, that now I'm going to find meaning in that mistake that I'm a bad person or I'm incapable. I'm weak. I can't ever get better reparably yeah. broken yeah that's the part that we don't need that's the part where i think restructuring thoughts is helpful i agree Absolutely. because these are all um cognitive distortions right what we're talking about is very all or nothing it's perfectionistic it should be it shouldn't be it's catastrophic it's all like the hallmarks of setting somebody up for depression and anxiety without take OCD out of the picture mm -hmm. is like, those aren't helpful thought patterns is like, well, there's a lot of factors going on in a person's life. And there's a lot of evidence that shows that you are capable and willing to experience these uncomfortable things and that you have the ability to do this. So that's why it is also so important that we work with people's thoughts. Yeah. 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 And expectations so that the experience is going to be really varied. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look like a textbook. No, That's yeah. life. Like people that aren't <clears throat> doing anxiety recovery of some kind, blow it. I didn't go to the gym yesterday or I didn't do the last set. Like that's just life, right? So yeah, it's a very yeah. act like everybody's going to screw up all the time. It's what we do. So yes. start from that premise and let's go from there. Yeah. The growth mindset. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going to mess up. So what do you do when you mess up? That's what we care about more than anything. Right. It's an opportunity versus it's um, a failure. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we're, here we are like trying to bring it back to that whole, like, and I, I just see it all the time, like recovery, my streak, you know, the, it's broken. This was perfect. Mm -hmm. And now if it's not perfect and it's nothing, that's the black and white. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm back at square one too. There's that aspect of it, which I think we talked about last time, but Yeah. Uh, let's talk for a second, if we could, about the idea of responsibility, though, because I, this is mm -hmm. one that sometimes gets a little bit dicey because people hear responsibility as blame. They interchange those two things when they don't belong. They don't they're not interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So like but in this situation, that screw up in a way. And I know this is sometimes catches heat or is controversial. Their choice there. So I made a choice to do mm -hmm. I accountability. You mean, yeah. OK, yeah. but in a way like, OK, recognizing that I actually was an active part of that system. I was one of the cogs in the machine there. 
Mm -hmm. entirely yes. out of my control is not a bad thing. So we're not saying like, that's your fault. You screwed up. It's, oh no, you have influence there. So I could do it different. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that, uh, like when I was talking, when we were talking about that, like fork in the road, yeah. it's interesting because when you start to beat up on yourself, it seems like you're taking responsibility, but what you're actually doing is suggesting that it's something that is outside of your control. Well, That's I'm just fundamentally flawed. I guess I can't do it. Right. Like, and so it's weird, right? Because you would think, oh, well, you're really taking uh, accountability for that. But actually the accountability comes in, in the other side of, of the, the path, which is in saying, Ooh, I didn't love that. Ooh, like that didn't, I didn't like how that turned out. And I, I maybe I made a choice that I would prefer not to repeat, but that like, you have to have that in order to take that next step. Yeah. Or you finish, right. finish the statement or ask the logical question. I, okay, I screwed up or I didn't like how that felt. What can I do differently? Whether they're, yes. whether you're asking your therapist or you're asking your support group, whatever it is, guys, what can I do different next time? That's accountability, right? That's responsibility. That is. And, and also saying like, oh, okay. So I know under these certain conditions, my brain is likely wanting to compulse, right? Like, cause there are some certain circumstances where people, it's just harder to resist. It's just harder because life's difficult sometimes or all the time, but more difficult in certain situations where, okay, we're going to accept that you're likely to have more intrusive thoughts and exposures are going to be a little bit harder right now. And resisting compulsions will be a little bit harder, but if we can give ourselves a little bit of grace here and self-compassion, then we can say, okay, next time I'm going to do this. Yeah. Well, a recognition of the context is probably pretty important. No. Sometimes. It, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. This is a thing. I mean, I've heard the OCD community talk about it more than any other. Like, you know, my dog is sick and my kids are acting up in school and I had a big fight with my husband and whatever it is. And everything got stickier and louder then for the last four days. That's a thing, correct? For sure. And with this caveat that sometimes it just happens to and there's yeah. everything's going just grand, right? And OCD can come up because people do get hung up on, oh, well, I don't understand why I'm feeling so angry. I don't understand why I'm having such a hard time. Yeah. Everything is good. And then that's a trap too. So, but yes, anxiety in general does not like change. It's like, no, mm -mm. <laughs> we do not do it this way. Uh -uh, and this no. is about, yeah, like generating psychological flexibility in reality. That's kind of the work we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Even when things <laughs> are bad, I'm staying. Finishing yeah. my coffee. I am finishing my yeah. coffee. <laughs> I'm staying, dude. Finishing yeah. my coffee. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, I don't know how much more we can say about this. I think it's really important that people understand that the streak, I blew it. I did. There my, is no streak. Though. There's no streak. That's right. Like don't, mm -hmm. don't build recovery streaks. That's pointless. It makes no sense. Don't build those streaks in anything. Like mm -mm. I like to meditate and I got caught a few times. Like, Oh, I broke my streak. Like, a, like the stupid insight timer app or whatever the one I like. Mm -hmm. Stop telling me how many days in a row I did this. Cause yes. that's bad. Like, then you're going to want to make me do, of course, there's a reason why they, why they do that. But so I, I try to don't do streaks anywhere. Streaks are silly. That's dumb. Well, yeah. But the only mm. reason they're doing that is because they want you to come back. Yeah. <laughs> they want, they're playing on your anxiety. <laughs> right. They're playing on your anxiety. Headspace Ulterior does like a motive. minute. It counts minutes actually. Interesting. Like cumulative minutes so that if you skip a day, they don't, you're not a horrible human. No, no, no. Interesting though. Insight, mm, I like Insight Timer, but Insight Timer is a little bit, you know, because your stars get brighter, more stars, and then all of a sudden, wow. stars are gone. Oh, shit. I would oh, hate that. Oh, man. I forgot. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that we've all got different ones. Like, my 10% happier, it does sometimes track the number of days you're doing it in a row, um, yep. but it's not like anything super flashy in terms of like, you know, you win the, the golden ticket for having meditated again today. Um, but yeah, I think it's hard because on the other hand, it can be sort of helpful to get into a routine with something to set goals and to try to show up in a disciplined way. But mm -hmm. it is as always this sort of middle ground of, of have, and having that flexibility to say like, okay, well, I didn't make it that day. Right. I, you know, I, I've had the last couple of years, this goal of meditating daily and 
I haven't met it at like last year, didn't make it make it 100% of the time. But if I had left it there, I wouldn't be to the point where I'm now meditating 15 minutes a day, right? right. Most of the time. So there has to be a little, there, uh, there's both, I'd say the vast majority of the days I've meditated, right? But that's uh, because I've been willing to hold, like hold myself accountable after the choice, you know, of, eh, like I, I, I didn't make it happen yesterday and I'm disappointed or, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. Okay. Well then back, back to square one, here we are. It's okay. I'm not square one, but like back, yeah. back to the drawing board and we move forward right. from here. Yeah. Back on the horse tomorrow. I think we're yeah. kind of, you know, kind of a, immer- oh, Kelly, you got to know it go. I know, but, uh, we're yes. kind of immersed in that sort of culture a little bit too, where like my fitness, yes. there's so many apps and so many things where like, and we're told, you know, consistency every day, man, every day, that hardcore mindset thing that mm-hmm. you see especially for men, I will tell you mm-hmm. that, you know, in that community, like you see a lot of dudes with beards bigger than mine talking about like being hardcore, man, and you get up at yeah. four in the morning and do your reading and do your, your, you know, 75 hard. Okay. But you can't always do that. And it right. Be productive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So a little tough. So perfectionism. If, yeah. Yeah. That's part of it too, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. So I guess, you know, to wrap it up a little bit, we're a little shorter than we usually are this week, but that's okay. No, nah, 20 minutes. We're good. You know, if you, if you think you ruined your streak or you're really down on yourself, <laughs> there because, was never a streak. There was never a streak. You broke your streak and somehow you're judging that and trying to find meaning in it and, and berating yourself for that. Don't do that. Well, yeah. Well, you guys tell no. your clients. In this Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, there's the Bob Newhart school, as we've talked about, of stop, stop it, it, right? Like, <laughs> just stop that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, and the, I wanted to call into what you said at the very beginning, which is also that if our expectation of recovery is that it's going to be a total um, absence of thoughts and feelings, then we're also in a mess. And if we're sort of gauging recovery in that way, then when they do come back, that we are going to get caught in the all or none thinking around, well, now I'm screwed forever too. Um, even though that's not a behavior per se. Yeah. Right. Kelly, how yeah. would you wrap it up? You got a client that's being very undoed. What would you tell them? They're being really <laughs> un- very undoed. What I do is I tell them to check it at the door. Usually I get kind of aggressive about it. And I explain what we just explained is like, that's what's actually getting in the way of you recovering. You know, that's what's getting in the way. And we have to be kind to ourselves. And sometimes I'll even assign them exposures where they're actively doing it part way. You know, they're doing the halfway mark. Yeah. Doing it wrong is the exposure. Your assignment is to do it wrong. Yeah. Get a C, not an A. Oh, I love it. That's yeah. good. That's good advice. Mm-hmm. I like how you said you get aggressive about it. I think a lot of people miss that part. You know, when your therapist gets a little bit in your face, they're trying to help. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to test the room, know who you're talking to. But usually I'm like, you, you, we can't do that. We can't, can't do it. Cause I've seen it get in the way of my recovery. It was one of the biggest factors in getting in the way of my recovery. Right. So mm-hmm. well done. It's always fun doing this with you guys. Do it again next month. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but, but we're, we'll be here. So, you know, as usual. Anyway, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, you guys, for coming by and checking it out. This will stay on my YouTube channel. And I don't know if you guys are going to put it up on wherever your outlets are, but yes. you can still find Kelly. Have Kelly on the, on the bottom of the screen at the OCD therapist, right, on Instagram. Lauren is at the obsessive mind on Instagram. What am I on Instagram? I you're the <laughs> dot anxious dot truth. Drew. Yes. Got to get rid of the period. <laughs> some point but whatever we'll figure it out so anyway yeah all oh, the there you can find us all and keep this here and comment we'll i'll drag them back into the comments if you guys come up with something in a couple of weeks okay <laughs> thanks for having <laughs> us no thanks for having See us on. Next time. later guys bye bye